Welcome to my series about all Chopin's music. Today, prelude in B major, opus 28, number 11. And I have to admit, for me, it's very sad. Not the music, but the thing that it's so short. It's one of my beloved preludes and one of my beloved Chopin's piece. But it's so short. So, well, I have, I was thinking about it a lot. Why he composed such a beauty and he closed it so fast? Probably because he didn't have time. Probably because he had a pressure of time, I thought. I thought, surely it was also composed in Mallorca. But not! When I take the book, uh, written by Jean-Jacques Eigeldinger, who uh, was, uh, who, as I told you before, who looked at the many sources and who r wrote which preludes were written before Mallorca and which in Mallorca. He had proof that this prelude was composed before Chopin reached Mallorca. So I I thought, I don't understand. Such a beautiful theme. It could have been a part of some sonata, of some middle part of the scherzo, of some other piece. And here, what a loss, lose, what a lost, sorry, uh, of beauty, I think. And you know, I have my own theory about it. Surely, well, if there is a proof that Chopin had this composed in sketches, I will not argue with that. But what I think is that there are two options. Either Chopin wrote a sketch for some beauty that came into his head when he was, I don't know, walking somewhere or just composing. He wrote a sketch and later he thought, I will do something with this. We know that Chopin was doing such things. Every composer does. Or he wrote it as a prelude. He didn't finish. He had one line, one line left. Maybe he thought later I will write more. Then he came to Mallorca. Then he got deadly sick. He didn't have piano. We know the story. He had time pressure. So he just decided to write the very fast cadence uh, cadenza at the end because that's how for me it sounds like it sounds like everything is so beautiful and the end is just right like oh I have to close this piece with something so I just write this and then I'll... sorry that's it done checked next one I am finished with this one uh, so well this is my theory, because I don't understand any other reason why this beauty is so short. Thanks God it's constructed in such a circle way that I can, when I practice or when I play it for myself, because I love to play it, it always makes me feel better. Uh, I, I play circles, I, I will present it for you today, I show you when exactly is this circle. And I just play it three, four, five times every time a little differently and then I'm happy because this music makes me happy if I were to describe this prelude with one word only I would use the word happiness what word would you use? I'm very interested please write down in the comments because I'm eager to read your answer your feelings towards this prelude now, another controversial thing in this music is the tempo. The tempo here is vivace, writes Chopin, which means fast. Vivace is lively, lively, fast. And of course, so we, it means that we cannot play it slow. But now, you know, it reminds me on some an, another piece of Chopin, which also was written fast. Chopin wrote even a metronome mark marking and he wrote don't play too slow but still later performers started to play it 
even twice as slow, even more. And the tradition approved that and everybody now plays it slowly. Do you know which piece is this? in E major, opus 10 number 3. We are going to talk about etudes in December or in January. But now I just want to mention this because here actually the Chopin tempo is twice as fast as I played for you. All the world plays so. And why they approve it here and why they don't approve in this prelude? This prelude sounds so beautiful when it's played slowly. Did Chopin make a mistake? I don't think so. But of course, when we talk about the etude, I will of course present for you the original Chopin tempo. And I think he was right. And the traditional performances, I mean the performances that we have now, that pianists, pianists really, well, this is very bad what I will say, but pianists think that they know better what Chopin wanted than Chopin himself, who wrote the metronome marking. This is ridiculous. But about this ridiculous thing we talk later uh, uh, in my video about etudes. But here, it's not quite so obvious because the tempo vivace means vivace when we count. When we count. And now Chopin here writes 6, 8, which means we had to count on 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then when we play Vivace, as we usually hear this prelude played fast, we would have to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Is it a Vivace? I think it's a Presto. It's Presto. Presto Prezissimo very 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 fast so vivace on six is slower and also i will show you that this is not written in 16 notes but in eight notes so that doesn't even look fast so vivace on six one two three four five six one two three four five six one two three four five six two. think about Chopin and his soul and he was singing to himself this music I think this is the correct tempo we can play a little faster but if you play much faster the beauty of this music is lost and this is very sad but okay that's just obje subject subjective thinking but now let's talk about the analysis let's make it objective let's talk about how it's written everything starts with one note only from which I mean, Chopin is opening this like a box. Let's imagine that this note is a box. Then we open this box. And then we start the melody. The melody that we hear, uh, I, I mean, the, the, is in the right hand. But in reality, we have two voices here. And now I want to show these voices to you. I will do it like I did before in Nocturnes presenting you the second voice one octave lower so that we can hear two voices. The, the second voice plays this. like motif. The first voice and 
together it sounds and this is the first phrase it's i mean this phrase was consists of two same phrases repeated so the first phrase Part B. Part B has only four bars because all the prelude is very short. But it's something else. This is heart of the piece. This is when we really cry. This is when I feel so happy. When I feel like ah, like like the sun is shining into my heart and my soul, and I love it dearly. I, it's one of my favorite moments in the whole Chopin music. But what makes it so special? First of all, the chord that we hear is a G sharp minor chord, which is a surprise for our ears, because here it should be B major. I show you how it should be, but this will be shocking because you know the piece, so for you it will be shocking, but I will play it anyway. It should be like this. This chord should be a continuation. But then we have the minor sister of B major, so the G sharp minor uh, with which Chopin will uh, play, will, sorry, will compose the next prelude. But so this is why moment is so beautiful. It starts with two minor chords, then we have two major chords, and then we come back to the beginning. So short, too short. Maybe this is a symbol that the happiness in Chopin's life never lasted too long, that generally he was miserable, we don't know. But anyway, this is so beautiful. Still we have two voices. stop there is a stop and then and we we think that we are at the beginning of the piece right because it sounds exactly like the beginning but instead of that Chopin didn't have time I, I, I don't know if it's true didn't have time so he just finished bad it's so sad but when I play this prelude now I present for you because I think the analysis is over we don't need to talk too much about this uh, uh, let's just enjoy the beauty of this music I play for you like I play for myself at home so I start from the beginning and I do try to make two voices as you can hear uh, with one hand I have two different touches, so uh, that's why I, I, I differentiate two voices. See?
again and again for the whole day. But now I finish. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it. And we see each other in my next episode. Bye bye.